Your name is written in the book of life. Notice Luke 10, verse 20. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. You see, those books that are opened up in heaven, it says books, books, plural, meaning that means it includes the book of life. Now, we don't have time to study out all the books and the references to the books that are being opened up in heaven. We can go, that, that could be a separate study. And we can do that sometime in the future. But books are opened up. One of them is the book of life. And right here in Luke 20, it says, Rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. Your name is written in the book of life. Anyone who has confessed Christ, anyone who has entered the service of Christ, anyone who has walked and said, I believe, I believe that Christ is my Savior, they, they have been recorded in the book of life. Right? God wants all men to be saved. Take a look at this next verse, Philippians 4, verses 3 through 7. Indeed, true companion, I ask you also to help these women who have shared my struggle in the cause of the gospel, together with Clement and also the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Whose names are written in the book of life. Uh, rejoice in the Lord uh, always, and again I say rejoice. Here we see Paul emphasizing we should always be rejoicing in the Lord. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Your name, if you confess Christ, is written in heaven. Now, here's the important point to, th to understand. Christ will not blot out our names provided we do two things. Oh, you say, what is that? Very simple. See, Christ's confession of our names, it's dependent upon our faith response to his calling. And I want to show you this, that each person's case is decided if we do two things. And these two things are really best exemplified through two parables, but I'll tell you this and then we'll go to the parables. One, have we clothed ourselves with the righteousness of Christ? That's the first criteria. Have we accepted Christ by faith? Have we appropriated his blood? Do we say, Lord, I believe that you died for my sins. Do we believe by faith that he did it? That's the first thing. We have to appropriate the righteous robes of Christ. We do that by faith in Christ. And two, have we forgiven others like God forgave us? Those are the two criteria that, that is being reviewed right now in heaven. And it's best exemplified through these two parables. Let's take a close look at these parables because they're very important. Look at the parable of the marriage feast. All right, Matthew 22, 8 through 14. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the main highways and as many as you find there, invite to the wedding feast. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered together all they found, both evil and good. And the wedding hall was filled with dinner guests. But when the king came to look over the dinner guests. Now notice right there, pause right there. Look at verse 11. But when the king came in to look over the dinner guests, you see that right there? I've highlighted that, to look over the dinner guests. See, there's an inspection. There's, there's a looking over. There's an evaluation. There, he's taking into account. He's inspecting, right? He's trying to render a judgment whether or not they should be part of the dinner or not part of the dinner. Let's keep reading. But when the king came in to look over the dinner guests, he saw a man there who was not dressed in wedding clothes. And he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without wedding clothes? And the man was speechless. Then the king said to the servant, bind him hand and foot and throw him into outer darkness. In that place, there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. See, the wedding garments represent the righteousness of Christ. Right? That's the only way we can obtain uh, salvation and eternal redemption is if we clothe ourselves with the righteousness of Christ. We cannot, by our good works, earn salvation. That's what we need to understand here. And in fact, it reminds me, it's, it, it reminds me of the, the reality of the, par or the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. We're, I don't have it on the screen, but I just am reminded of this. Remember the Pharisee says, look at me, look at how good I am. I tithe, I give, I do all these good things. And he says, I, oh, I'm glad I'm not like this tax collector, this sinner. 
What did the tax collector do? Confesses, I'm a sinner. Lord, have mercy upon me. And Jesus says, who went home justified? The tax collector went home justified. See, we, if we try to clothe ourselves with our, the robes of our own righteousness, we'll be just like this man in the parable of the marriage feast. How did you come in here without the proper wedding clothes? Because you can only be in this wedding if you have the righteous robes of Christ. So we can't come to God with our righteousness. No. It's only through the mercy and grace and love of God through Christ Jesus that we can appropriate the blood of Christ, his righteous robes. So that's the first criteria that's being reviewed in this heavenly sanctuary. Have we appropriated the robes of Christ, his righteousness? Let's take a look at the second parable. Parable of the unforgiving servant. Now, I'm not going to read this whole thing to you. You can go slowly through your Bible, but notice the major elements of this story in Matthew 18, 25, 23 to 35. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. Now notice that, settle account. Do you see how it says settle account? Settling accounts is like taking an audit. It's conducting a review. It's an evaluation. It's an investigation. He's trying to settle his accounts. He's trying to bring the accounts to closure. Verse 24, when he had begun to settle them, no, we'll read through this whole thing, sorry. Verse 24, when he had begun to settle them, the one one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. But since he did not have the means to repay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, along with his wife and children, and that all that he had in repayment was to be made. Verse 26, so clearly the slave cannot pay. So the slave fell to the ground and prostrated himself before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you everything. Verse 27, And the Lord of that slave felt compassion and released him and forgave him the debt. Okay, so the debt's forgiven. Verse 28, But that slave went out and found one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii, and he seized him and began to choke him, saying, Pay back what you owe. So his fellow slave fell to the ground and began to plead with him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you. But he was unwilling and went and threw him in prison until he should pay back what was owed. Verse 31, So when his fellow slaves saw what he had, had happened, they were deeply grieved and came and reported to their Lord all that had happened. Then summoning him, his Lord said to him, You wicked slave! I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not also have had mercy on your fellow slave in the same way that I had mercy on you? And his Lord moved with anger, heart handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that was owed him. My heavenly father will also do the same to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. God is settling accounts Right? The kingdom of God is compared, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts. To settle accounts means he's looking and reviewing over the books. There's an investigation, there's a review, there's, there's an audit, there's an accounting, there's an evaluation of our behavior. What have we done with the forgiveness that God extends to us through his, through, through his son, Jesus Christ? What have we done with that? Have we forgiven others just as Christ forgave us, just as God forgave us through Christ? That's why it's so important. The Lord's Prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth and as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive us our trespasses. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me as I forgive others who trespass against me. We're forgiven as we forgive. Do we forgive from our hearts? Now, this is tough to do. You've been offended. You've been transgressed. Someone's offended you. Someone's sinned against you. Someone has hurt you. And we all face that choice. What do we do with it? 
I can't go into my personal story, but I learned a great lesson many years ago. It cost me a lot of money because a business associate of mine took a lot of money from me. And I had to pay a debt I didn't owe. I had, to, I had to write checks. And it was at that time that I was writing these checks. I, I was so mad. I was, so, I was burning with anger. Burning. I wanted to ruin his life. I was writing checks for a debt that I didn't owe. He had made the mistake. He had swindled me. He'd stole from me. But I was writing the checks. And as I wrote those checks, I realized that I was paying his debt. And then, at the time, my father kept emphasizing to me, you've got to forgive him. You've got to forgive him. And I basically realized that I was paying his debt for something that he owed, but I paid it. And I realized, wow, I owe a tremendous debt to Christ Jesus because he paid a debt that I can't even pay. We can't pay to earn our way into heaven. So if we can't pay to earn our way into heaven, anything that anyone has ever done to us, hurt us, is, is a pittance. It's tiny. It's minuscule. It's atomic in the big scheme of the universe of what Christ did for us. So God is looking. Have we clothed ourselves with the righteousness of Christ? It's not a righteousness of our own. And have we forgiven others as Christ and God the Father forgave us? Those are the two criteria. God wants all men to be saved. Like what you see? Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Or you can go to angelsintheglen.org. That's angelsintheglen.org. We've got an entire series for you to take you through the events that must take place before Christ returns. God wants his people ready. It's not a time to fear. It's a time to be ready. I hope you'll join us.